I know it's still early days, but what can you tell us about how dangerous this latest virus strain is? We know it can evade vaccines. Could this be, we're back to ground zero? Well, I don't think so. And I'll tell you the reason why. Um, first of all, from what we've heard from South Africa, is that there does not seem to be um, an increased virulence. There seems to be increased transmissibility. But there was a report from the South African health minister that most of the people infected were younger people and the cases were relatively mild. Um, the virus was first detected in someone uh, infected on the 9th of November. So we're now three weeks uh, out from that. And, and while there has been a rise in cases in South Africa, there has not been a, a comparable rise in hospitalizations. So again, you might say I'm an optimist uh, or over optimistic, but I think this is similar to what we've seen with Delta Plus or with Mu in recent weeks, where they appeared very threatening at the beginning, but eventually they were not, uh, they turned out to be not as bad as they were afraid, feared to be. When it comes to vaccines, is there a sense that what we have right now, the science that we have right now, can offer some cross protection? Well, it's a bit complicated because what we're looking at is antibodies. And we know that the host immune response is more than antibodies. It also involves T cells. It also involves the innate immune response. On the surface, um, the antibody um, data are concerning because they do suggest that uh, many of the antibodies which are commercially available right now will not work. And there's a risk that the vaccines may not work. But again, we saw this with the beta variant. Uh, and the vaccines are pretty effective against the beta variant. They may not be as effective as they are against the wild type, but they are pretty good even against the beta variant. So I am pretty confident that the vaccines will continue to do their job in preventing severe illness and death. Do you think then that the travel bans we've seen, some of these uh, border restrictions that we've seen over the weekend, are, are they justified this time around when more of the world is vaccinated? No, I think they're completely unjustified. And I think uh, there's several reasons for that. In the first place, you've already got spread of the disease in uh, in these countries, the, uh, in particular in Western Europe, uh, where we've identified cases over the last few weeks. Uh, so the disease is already in there, or rather the variant is already in there. So trying to impose a travel ban now is like shutting the barn door after the horse is bolted. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, what this travel ban does uh, is it sends a very bad signal to countries all over the world because, you know, the South Africans did a really good job in being transparent and identifying the cases and announcing it to the world. And then they get rewarded with a travel ban, which is going to cripple the tourist uh, sector of the economy. And from what I've heard from colleagues, uh, uh, virologists in South Africa are already feeling uh, the pain from individuals who are losing their livelihood and blaming the virologists for identifying this variant. So that's really counterproductive, and I, and, and I sincerely hope that uh, the WHO's advice is taken uh, seriously in this case. So, so what is the right approach then? What would you prescribe, doctor, just given, again, of course, it's, it's easy to, to panic, of course, but it's still early days. What would be the right approach? Can, can we actually live with this new virus strain and, and reemerge out of this crisis as what most economies are, are facing now? Yes, and I think that's the, the message that's come through in almost every country in the world over the last few months, is that we have to learn to live with the virus, with its different mutations, with the different variants that are going to emerge. And what we have to do is we have to use a science-based approach. So, you know, like what the South Africans did, which is to do detailed genetic fingerprinting so that you understand how the virus spreads, follow basic infection prevention uh, protocols, make sure that there's good hygiene, that there's mask use in appropriate settings, and track uh, these cases. When you get a new variant emerging, you could do detailed contact tracing because you're dealing with only one or two cases. When you start getting hundreds or thousands of cases a day, it's too late to do detailed contact tracing. And then at that point in time, you want to ramp up your vaccination. You want to identify those who are ill, ensure they get the appropriate treatment, and try and prevent uh, uh, mortality rather than try and prevent the incidence of cases. Uh, and, and doctor, maybe you can talk a little, a little bit more about just it, how 2022 is going to look like. Is this, what is it going to look like to you? What's the picture going to be? Are we going to be dealing with more of these types of virus strains? Uh, how is it going to be different from 2020, for example? Yeah, you know, it's kind of depressing, but uh, I hate to say this, but 2022 is going to look a lot like uh, 
what this year has looked like. And that is unless uh, the world can get our act together and ensure that everybody gets a chance to get vaccinated, everybody who wants to get a chance to get vaccinated. Because you can see, it's no coincidence that these uh, uh, new strains are emerging in settings where vaccination rates are very low. So people who don't have access to, uh, to affordable vaccines uh, are just not going to get vaccinated, and the virus is going to go smoldering through these populations. So unless the world gets its act together, ramps up vaccination in low- and middle-income countries where the vaccination rates are depressingly low, um, we're going to see more of the same. And, you know, it's in their self-interest for uh, high-income countries to make sure that low- and middle-income countries get vaccinated because they don't want to go back to square one every two or three months when there's a new variant emerging from some uh, low- and middle-income country somewhere else. 